Hey everybody, RJ here with a couple quick program notes about the episode. First though, I want to say really quickly, thank you all so much for your continued support. Yesterday, March 15, 2024 was our podcast's 6th anniversary. 6 years of podcasting already, that's crazy. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. We love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you again. Uh, Now on to the programming notes. First and foremost, I would like to apologize for a minor audio issue that occurs at around 8 or 9 minutes in. I'm not sure exactly what happened as I was actually not involved in this session. This was like the second time they'd done a D&D session for the podcast without me. Uh, But it sounds like someone either hit the table right by the microphone or possibly the microphone itself hard enough to make a loud noise and I think maybe jostle something out of place, which made the audio get uh, heavy and harsh static, which I was able to reduce, but unfortunately at the cost of um, some muffling in the audio, especially the highs, so it sounds a little bit muffled. Uh, Fortunately, the problem only persists for about exactly two minutes, I think maybe just over Uh, And then the recording goes back to normal for the rest of the episode. Again, I apologize for this audio hiccup. I tried to clean it up the best I could, but like they say, it's way easier to fix audio problems while recording than in post-production. Secondly, there's a little bit of a continuity change from the previous Saint Sana special. If you've listened to that episode, you may remember Ash's character, Leon McJenkins, was one of the two characters that survived the battle with the Shadow Dragon, However, it has been retconned now in this episode by B that he is now one of the two characters that died from the Shadow Dragon's attack. It's not a huge issue, and also not the first time continuity in Vasanoka has shifted, but to be fair, both times that that's happened, the episodes were recorded like at least a year apart, and in this case, I think it was actually closer to like four years apart. So, (laughs) you know, cut him some slack. Uh, Anyways, lastly, I do want to mention that this episode was recorded last year on St. Patrick's Day, so things get just a little bit wonky now and then, but, you know, that's part of the fun. Uh, Anyways, thanks again for listening and supporting us for six years. Now sit back, relax, crack open a cold brew, and celebrate with us for the St. Sana's Day 2024 special. Previously, on Realms and Nerds, The Vasanoka Adventures. My name is Sana. Look, I've been watching over this land for years now, ever since I first saved it. These deep gnomes, they're, they just, they love to take care of the, you know, the top land without them even knowing about it. Anyways, we kind of have a problem. When I flooded the land, I buried all the dragons here, underneath the ground, but recently I've noticed that some of them have come back as dark dragons. As Leon makes his way between these small piles of gold, he sees a young red shadow dragon. And suddenly, you see this dragon jump up with these giant black wings and come and lands on top of this walkway. As he blasts a shadow breath attack, A humanoid reduced to zero hit points by this damage dies, and an undead shadow rises from its corpse and acts immediately after the dragon in the initiative count. The shadow is under the dragon's control, and San, who's bleeding out in the middle of this open space, says, Oh, I'm not gonna do this again. (sighs) Suddenly, this whole room is just completely filled with water and you see this dragon start to get some struggles and it's trying to breathe and it's letting out fire and you see this smoke and then you see Sana go full on monk and you just see this the water is being pushed together and and she lets this energy out and as she does the room is dispensed of this water and this dragon falls crashing down to the ground and uh, Sana severs the neck.
Our story today starts actually right after the death of Leon McJenkins and Jeff's Drunkle. As they are fighting this dark red small dragon and are slain and their spirits are ripped from their body as they are forced to watch in horror as their party members continue to fight against their spirits and against this dragon. And as they fell the dragon, their spirits are stuck in this black abyss, this void. And then, after what feels like forever, they both see a campfire in this abyss of nothingness. And upon approaching the fire and sitting down next to it, they hear a voice that says, If you wish to sleep, I can take you to your final resting place. But if the fire within you for good still burns strong, then I'd willingly take you home. I don't know about you, but I feel a burning and burn inside. I got a little more time left. So if you kindly send me back, it'd be most appreciated. Especially <coughs> if the afterlife is this boring. And I don't know about like, uh, like sleep forever. I mean, a nap might be nice, but uh, <laughs> like a long-term deal, I, I don't know if I really signed up for that, man. Like, I mean, I got, I got things going on. You know, like, uh, uh, um, uh, I'm building a fence at my house, and, uh... I'm glad that the fire within still <laughs> burns strong. And Jeff Drunkle and Leon McJenkins are brought back to life via total resurrection in a small, deep gnome town under the Sana Valley. I feel life in me. And standing over them is a few deep gnomes and a human female <coughs> that they recognize as Sana. Sana, how have you been? Good. It's only been like a day since I saw you last. Well, alive, that is. To us, it feels like it's been an eternity. In perpetuity. In darkness. It was... Really fucking boring. It was a little weird, man. Well, your souls were holding suspension in the dragon's plane of uh, influence, and that's why there was nothing there as the dragon died. Wild, dude. That at least did perish. Now, where is the nearest bar? I'm thirsty. Well, we've got alcohol right here. Excellent. That's and like... Really advantageous, man. <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? Well, like, why don't we get you guys settled in here? <coughs> and uh, over the next year, Leon McJenkins and Jeff Drunkle, as they have realized that their identities in the top world are now quite stolen, dead. <laughs> <laughs> Identity theft isn't a joke, Michael. <laughs> Millions of people suffer every year. Uh, Jim, Jim, they've hey, Jim. since perished. Um, they have found a spot here living among the deep gnome and the band that they have. And just like they had told you before, the way that they like to go about their business is aiding the top side almost without them knowing at all. So... At night, they go out and they tinker with the water systems and find the perfect irrigation for the crops in the fields. And they sustain themselves off of picking um, all of the crops that aren't going to grow to be full and um, almost keep this lot, this whole land alive and uh, prune the land effectively <coughs> uh, in a way that is beneficial for the farmers and all the people who make a living there. So don't piss off the deep gnomes, or they'll pee in your cereal at night. Oh yeah, and you know, they might make a shoe or two while the cobbler's asleep. (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> Jeff, just like he had always been, uh, has spent his time on the front lines, essentially, of this, always going from place to place on top of whatever needs to get done to help these peoples. And he also likes that uh, he's able to help the people at the top side. And also, these deep gnomes are quite drunk a, a lot. And uh, he, he really respects that. Um, he respects their ability to, to brew with just about anything. And uh, they make a lot of different concoctions that he enjoys. <laughs> and uh, Leon, on the other hand, uh, actually had found himself a, a number of uh, deep gnome that were very interested in his monk abilities. And over this year, he's started training six students that he sees this as a way of repaying the monks that trained him. And... Um, spreading the uh, power and the gift that was bestowed upon him. And as this year goes by, they both become integrated into this, uh, this society and begin to find a place that they feel at home. And, uh, and you know, really are, are willing to, um, you know, to just do whatever it takes to help this, this society. And um, about a year later... As the summer solstice is approaching, a hill dwarf comes from the Copenes region bearing a message that is uh, not looking good. He comes bearing the message of a lizard folk invasion from the Gnome Council. He stumbles into town one day, is, is picked up by a, a group of deep gnome and brought down to this, uh, this meeting chamber where... You're all here as, as he explains, uh, that these lizard folk are gonna be invading on the, the border region. You look at that, boys. Time to prove ourselves once and for all as valuable members of this community by defending our land from these lizard folk. I mean, I could take a few in a fight, but I could always use a few friends at my back. A few allies. Your fists would be most welcome. Bad. Oh, my fists can't wait to taste the blood of lizard folk. Hey, so, uh, stranger, uh, what's your name again? Name's Punchy. Pun- yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, Punchy, tell me, uh, like, where exactly, like, what's... What exactly is, like, where are they coming from? And, uh, and the monks and all of this, uh, people kind of punchy coming in and, and saying this, and then the words kind of spreading amongst this group. Um, San actually comes over to the three of you and says, Hey, come on, let's go over here and talk. Get some details straight. Jeff, I know that you're going to want to be on the top of this. And, uh, you just kind of walk to a, uh, a little alcove. And, um, Punchy explains that these, uh, lizard folk have been reported flooding to the, uh, the northeast region of Copenets by the Gnome Council. And, uh, they suspect that they are intending to come into Sana and, uh, start some raiding. This is unacceptable. We need to strike them now. We have the advance to know the couple. Yeah, we can't let these fuckers hurt me of these poor innocent folk. Well, my guess is that they're going to try to come in on on the new moon before the summer solstice. Then we must prepare ourselves in our defense so that we can take them by surprise and destroy them <coughs> in one fell Very good idea. Unfortunately, I won't be able to assist you. But I know that you are... Capable and uh, anything that we can do to help prepare. I'll leave you in charge of this. Thank you, Kai. We'll get right on top of it. As this, uh, this hustle and bustle of the news getting around is kind of simmering down and the night is coming to an end and everyone's getting ready to go to bed, all just uh, sitting around the fire, kind of getting to know each other. 
this one deep gnome who is uh, getting <coughs> rather drunk starts, uh, it's this elderly gnome, starts uh, telling all these tales and you hear him talking, Hoon! Can't be waiting for that there no moon. Spooky stuff always be happening. What do you mean spooky thing, old man? I think you're just being superstitious, guy. No, 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 it's a special moon before the summer solstice, yeah. You've had one too many tonight. Oh, no, 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 no. Most people don't want to be talking about this because of, you know, legend and our leader and whatnot, but, um... You know, they say that that was the day that everything happened with Sana's parents. Wait, like... Sana has parents? I thought she was like a a ethereal being or whatever. Of course she has fucking parents. You think she just sprouted out of the ground like my people do? Oh, everybody has parents. Personally, I thought she fell out of the sky in a ball of fire. Or something intense. Oh, no, no, no. You see, the moon be her mother, but the sea be her father. I I don't understand the logistics of this. <laughs> I, I, I'm i pretty sure she comes from a couple of people. But, you know, you, you, you say what you need to say, you crazy old fucker. And you see, what, what happened is... Uh, is she came and she blew all those dragons away, right? And then, and then her pop said, uh, "You can't be doing that." And tried to banish her. They say that her <coughs> mom gave her very light that night to save her. You're telling me the moon went out because she was trying to save her daughter. Indeed. I don't believe a word of this hogwash. Oh, it's it. I. I uh, I tell you, it'd be true, but you didn't hear it from me, I tell you. You know, I've seen things on the other side. A pitch black like you never know. I must say, I'm inclined to believe you, old timer. Oh, indeed. You've been, uh, you've been smoking, boy. No, I've been dead. And drinking? I mean, I've been drinking for sure, but, uh... I mean, man, I I don't know. The moon going out sounds pretty strange, but... And then now you get you hear this? They say, nobody says they'd be seeing it, but they say that, that Sana, mm. she gives her own light now for the moon on that day, on the new moon. I don't know what it means, but that's what they be saying. I mean, people say a lot of things, man. It's like, it's like whatever mm. you think about it. Oh, what? Whatever I think about it is what I think about it. Ugh. I'm going to bed. This is too much theology for my brain, day. I'm just going to worry about handling those lizard folk when I get here. Yeah, it's too much woo for me. I'm going to bed. So Punchy finds his way to bed. And um, over the next week, you all are... Preparing for this invasion, um, moving through the tunnel system, getting stuff ready, and uh, you have all found your way close to the uh, the northern east border of uh, Sana, and um, there you are um, prepared for this invasion. Boys, I think we got ourselves a good position. No, we just wait for these fuckers to get here, and we destroy them. Yeah, it seems pretty clean cut, don't it? I mean, shouldn't we, like, seems figure out where they cut, are? What if they it? walk right past us, man? Uh, didn't we block off every other way to get into this place? No, I thought the plan was to funnel them in in a specific area, so that we could take them where we want them. Yeah, that's what we've been doing all week, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> is it, DM? <laughs> Over the past week, you guys have um, been trying your best to um, find an area that um, the land and the different water networks um, kind of all naturally funneled them. And you've uh, done your best to... Uh, and your scouts have, uh, who have been going out have indicated that you have uh, this one pass that is... Uh, going to be their main route. 
And it's uh, just a little ways off the coast. It's in kind of a wooded area with two hills, and there's kind of a kind of roll these big rolling hills, and kind of this little pass that goes between them. We've got the advantage. I say we take it. All right, man. Let's uh, let's do it. I guess. <laughs> All right, both of you guys roll a, a charisma check. Fuck. Me or no? Nope. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Leon and Jeff. We're all great. Leon's not great. <laughs> Leon's not. I'll give great Leon at... advantage. Good thing too. That went from a five to a sixteen. Nice. Uh, thirteen. Um, roll a d six. Um, also roll a d six. I got four. One. Over the past week, Jeff. You found one really battle-hardened gnome that you trust dearly that is uh, willing to uh, go on the front lines and risk it all with you. And Leon, you have uh, four of your students that have decided to join you in this fight. All right, boys, listen. We're going into the belly of the beast. And there's no turning back. So I don't want to see any sissies in this here. Yes. Is that understood? Uh, yes, I'd say. I mean, technically speaking, didn't we come out of the belly of the beast? I mean, we're outside now. Don't overthink it, <laughs> Okay, so there's kind of like, uh, give you a general layout of how it's all going to work. There's like a, a hill and a hill, right? And then this is kind of the pass that I indicated, uh, Going through the middle of those two hills. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a field off to the side of these two hills, just the other side of this hill. Uh, farming crops. So then these are like water channels and the crops. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as that goes, different terrain there. Um, and then this is this outside, and kind of over here is all like forested, lightly forested area. So they're coming from the north or the south? They're coming from the north, as far as like this picture is concerned. Okay. All right. On this day before Saint Sonnen's Day, you, uh, as you're all in your, um, I guess I'll, I'll also, I'll say, I'll ask you guys now. You could put up some like light defenses as, as far as. Um, I assume you probably you have something laid out over here, but if, if you quickly want to say you have specifically uh, placed anything on the board, now is the time. Did we put some barricades up? I would put two, not to meta or anything, but I would think two barricades going down into a V to literally funnel them in the middle of the path. Um, I will give you guys... Um, Seven small like walls that you could uh, place. So that V would be like two walls. Mm. What about a? And I guess that was counted. However many you want to put out. What about a spiked pit? Okay, how long have we had to prepare this? Like a week. Had a week. Week. Okay. So we got some good time. Get a little bit of time. So we got some time. We got some time. Well, actually, I'm going to say you have like uh, four days from like when you got your reports back that you were sure that they are going to be coming this way. How steep are these hills? They are... The backside of both these hills is kind of a bit steeper. This bit here would be like raised compared to this down here. That makes sense. The field is lower than that pass between the two hills. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking as they go down into the pass. Are we talking like a really steep? Or so a that's gradual? what I'm saying. This is a bit more gradual in between the two hills. Okay. The outside of the hills is a, a much more steeper incline. All right. All right. So what are our options for things that we can build? That's what I say. I'll give you seven walls. About how tall would you say? Uh, like uh, six feet. Okay, so we can build walls. That's yeah, a couple walls, mm-hmm. and then I I would say like if you do want to dig something, I can tell you the extent to which you'd be able to. So we build like, like a what you would be able to get done, like a trebuchet. No assault weapons. Actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That was <coughs> uh, yeah, a fair question. And like I said, this is kind of something that primarily the deep gnome kind of work at night. So uh, this is something that they kind of just been doing on these like night shifts. 
Okay. All right. I guess we might as well do this as an in-character discussion. Might as well. All right, guys. So, like, we've got to secure this pass somehow. Kind of working on limited time here, but what do you what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking we funnel them into a senior little location. So they can't move around and flank us at any point. we got to be able to get them where we want. Maybe we can build a few uh, pits as a nasty little surprise for them, too. Yeah, that's a good idea. What about a, what about like a wall and then a pit? <coughs> I think they're just hopping over a wall. They hop over the wall straight into the pit. That's a good idea. I'm liking where you're mine. What are we going to put in the pit? Or is it just to slow them down? Spikes. We're going to put spikes in the pit. Very well. You can spike two pits at the cost of one wall. Wait, two pits cost one wall? To spike two pits, it costs one section of wall. Okay. One for the wall. Does digging the pit cost a wall as well? No. Okay. So what if... Okay, I think, like, uh, at the beginning of... The very, uh, like, the beginning of this, we do two walls and then, like, a pit on either side of the (coughs) wall. So two walls, two pits. Put spikes in the bottom of both. That'll slow them down pretty significantly. And then after that, we do, uh, do like what Leon was saying. We have two rows of, uh, like, funneling walls. I like the sound. That's a pretty good idea. We put a wall across this section. We build ourselves a nice pit full of spikes. And then we, you said do another one? Yeah. And then we do another one over in this direction, not too much further along. So they have another problem to deal with. Now when we build these funnels, should we start them at the tops of the hills where it gets steep so they have to go through rather than climb up the, the slope? I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I think, like, one at the steepest point, and then one, like, right before we're making our stand, right? Like, that makes sense just to, like, make our make our fallback point the last funnel point. All right, so I think, uh, I think we do this in multiple phases then, like... I agree. Picking them off as they come. We fight them after the second... I mean, the pits are like, we don't want to deal with that. But, like, after the second pit, we fight the guys coming out of the pit. And when it gets too much, we fall back, uh, like, to the first wall. And then after that, to the second wall. Indeed. Okay, I think we have a plan. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think, Punchy? Is that going to that gonna work for you? That'll work fine for me. Excellent. We got ourselves a mission. We're gonna pull it off, boys. I can. <coughs> It'll be easier than fighting that dragon. You guys fought a fucking dragon? I told you I'd die. And he did too. Dragons are no. They're not to be fucked around. Oh, no. I, I, I'm not looking down on you folks. That's that's a hell of a fight, I'll tell you what. I mean, it was like a. A shadow dragon, technically, but it, I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty gnarly, man. I, I don't doubt that. Definitely well worth the effort. All right, but I think uh, I think that's the plan, boys. We start take our positions behind the second pit, and then uh, uh, what's the <coughs> signal to fall back? Um, I'll yell out, "Cock a doodle do." Second time. Crawl in the big chat. <laughs> I like it, man. That's fun. That's pretty, uh, pretty offbeat. All right, so we just let everybody know, like, Cockadoodle do is the fallback. We go back to the first wall, and then after that, the second wall, and radio. Hopefully, it's all cool after that, man. All right. It is uh, late afternoon, and you're preparing for this night raid. You see off in the distance a large brown bear approaching with <coughs> two barrels under each of his arm. Is the bear walking upright? Yes. <laughs> Is his name Wojtek? <laughs> and it, it stumbles into your camp, 
sets these barrels down and turns back into Sana. Oh, hey, son. Nice of you to drop by our camp. What's that you got there? Well, is it, I, is it some booze, man? Kind of, sort of, yeah. I, unfortunately, like I said, I, I'll be busy this evening, but, um, you guys, I've got this for you. It's, um, it's like a magical, uh, brew I made. Um, it'll, uh, it'll help you fight if you feel like drinking this evening. Um, I didn't oh, want to keep you from the celebration. Oh, you know I'll be fucking <clears throat> drinking. Punchy's already drinking. <laughs> well, calm down. <laughs> Get ahead of himself. Hey, man, like, need some for the rest of us, dude. What's at the back of the hall? Warning. Can cause severe diarrhea and potential chrome. Potential blindness. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking see anymore! You don't need to see. It's wood alcohol! <laughs> It's fucking wood alcohol. It's a good old <laughs> bathtub brew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, canonically speaking, this is uh, the best in both worlds. In, in in a matter of speaking, it can be used to grant health in some aspects, and it can also be used to bolster fighting strength if you'd wish. So, um. I guess I'll say this way. Depending on how much you decide to use before you start combat will um, slightly alter your player's stats for the battle, and it also will change uh, how the health aspect of the alcohol will work, if that makes sense. We're gonna find out. So, uh, just saying you can min max if you want to get like really, really plastered uh, beforehand, then there's gonna be less of a healing pool that you'd be able to use during this fight. Okay. Wait, so you're um, saying if we drink less, we have more of a healing pool later on? Yeah, essentially. Okay. I think Leon's probably gonna go with that. Because he's not the biggest and strongest, uh, Person that being a stout halfling. Um. <laughs> the smallest person in this um, fucking village. Punchy's getting fucked up. I don't know. You got a lot of, uh, got a lot of gnomes around. Deep gnomes. <laughs> they're all about a foot taller than me, but like, no big deal. How tall are you? I'm three foot tall! Well, they're about like I'm three, they're like three, four feet tall, too. You're a halfling and you talk like that? I Shouldn't know. you be talking like this? Why don't you go fuck yourself and your stereotypes? Why don't you go fuck yourself and your stereotypes? Why don't you go fuck yourself? And Listen, your... height doesn't affect vocal cords. <laughs> Size, and resonance does kind of affect voice. Though. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> um. <laughs> so Leon is going to choose to. Are you going to drink it all before the battle? He's going to drink part of it before the battle. How much part? I'll say half of it. Okay. Half of the portion. Yeah? We have two barrels, right? Just don't worry about the logistics of how much you get. You all get an equal portion. Like, but I want a whole barrel to myself, man. I mean, I... I all get two-thirds of a barrel. <laughs> I'm not about, like, keep like keeping track of the portions, man. I mean, like, just a good chunk of it. I don't know, man. <sighs> Punchy's going to drink his whole portion. Bet. All right. I mean, I don't know. Jeff's probably not drinking all of his, but, like, I mean, I don't know. Probably a good chunk. Two-thirds, maybe. Okay. Punchy. Plus three to strength. <laughs> Minus four to wisdom. And intelligence. Plus two to constitution. Minus two to wisdom. Minus two to intelligence. So plus three to constitution. All right. All right. Okay. Oh god, okay, I'm coming. Way down. Um, you get a plus two to strength, minus one to constitution, and minus one to wisdom. Plus one strength, okay, minus one intelligence. Jet! Not like I was stupid before or anything. Way down in the... And, um... 
You have a pool of 35 <coughs> HP. 35 HP, you said? Yep, then you can use... Um, do you have anything that would normally grant health? I don't think so. Yeah, my wholeness of body. Oh, sure. Okay, so if you choose to use anything that like would normally grant health, you can use it during that, or you can use it as a bonus action to give yourself health. Cool. And you get 25. Sweet. I feel so alive. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. <laughs> Who's Mr. Stark? A guy I buy alcohol from back in the city. You hear Barroom Hero from fucking uh, the Dropkick Murphy start playing. So, as the late afternoon comes, evening, the sun is starting to get kind of uh, on the horizon. Where are you guys going to start to position yourselves? Okay, um, so I'm sending one of my monks a ways down the trail to keep an eye out for the impending lizard folk. And his instructions are to come back to us and warn us they're almost there. And I'm pretty sure we're positioning ourselves right uh, somewhere right about here. No, I thought we were going to position ourselves at the first uh, funnel. Um, no, no, right, right here. So as they come <laughs> to this pit and they have to climb out of the pit, we can beat the shit out of them as they climb okay. out of the pit. Okay. So our intention, okay. yeah, our intention was so we have two pits, and then after that we have two wall funnels. Crap. So our intention was to initially position ourselves behind the second pit. Because it doesn't make sense for us to have to deal with navigating the pits. That's dumb. But we're waiting behind the second pit so that we can kill them as they try to climb out of the second pit. And then if we're being overwhelmed, and then these are the our fallback fall is the two wall points. Okay. I'm not very fast. Hey. Us dwarves are known as sprinters. <laughs> we're known for being sprinters. We're known for being very dangerous. It's almost short distance. I mean, I would say none of you are particularly fast. No. I'm 45 for movement speed because I'm a... Oh, man. right. You got that. You're fast. Crazy movement. Yeah, I'm not. I can run along the walls like the night in there. As everyone prepares themselves for this encounter, you... Uh, are waiting and waiting as uh, both Jeff and Punchy get uh, drunker and drunker off this magical ale. And then you see, uh, <coughs> as you see as one of Leon's monks comes running up the hill and past the uh, the first pit. There he is, boy. That's the signal they're coming. <laughs> they're almost they're almost to the wall. They're, I, I mean, I just saw them. They, they're coming this way. Good boy. Ready yourself for a fight. I'm always ready for a fight. I can see that from here. All right, man, let's do it. And you see as some torchlight approaches, you can see it just past that first wall. You actually see as uh, the light kind of uh, is is there for a second and then flickers out, and then a few uh, moments later you hear some ruffling on the wall and then something fall and thud into the ground. And, uh... Scream. You hear some... some... <laughs> Sounds like they hit the first pit. Good job, Punchy. No problem, man. <laughs> I'm gonna need uh, Leon to roll a perception check. That's a 13. Leon sees as uh, he peeks um, up over the hill towards the first pit. He sees that two of these lizard folk are um, pulling themselves out of this pit pretty messed up, and uh, he can see maybe two or three others that look like they're um, looking for maybe another way around. They're trying to figure out how to get around the first pit. They're almost here, boys. Ready yourselves. Be wary they might try to go around this first wall. We gotta force them over it into the pit if we can. I right, see so you guys just waiting? So there's full foliage up along the wall, the hill, correct? Or is it just grass? It's just like grass. No, okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for them. Yep. Sticking to the plan. All right. 
you see nothing. You hear nothing. Um, these two lizard folk that had fallen over, it sounds like they scurried back up over the the wall and uh, retreated. I don't like the fact that they're not coming. Perhaps we should scout ahead of them and make sure they're still following us. I volunteer as tribute, for I'm quick on my feet. Get up there and do it. I mean, you can go take a look, man. I mean, I don't know where else they're going to go, but All right, um, go for it. Leon's going to circumvent the pits in the walls as sneakily as he can and try to see if the lizard folk are trying to find a way around, because if they are, his intention is to try and goad them into following him, and he's going to try and use his monk skills to go over the walls... Try to make him follow him. Do another perception check. Okay, okay. I'm a ten. As Leon creeps up over and starts getting closer, he doesn't see the lizard folk behind the first wall, and uh, all he sees is some tracks heading down the hill, kind of towards the farm. Shit! I'm going the wrong way. He immediately runs back to the group. Boys, we got a pro. They're heading for the fields instead of in the pass. We gotta get them back on the path before they circumvent our entire plan. Follow me. Sounds good to me. Let's go. And he heads up to the top of the hill to look over the farmland. And as everyone kind of looks over this hill down at the top, <coughs> you can see that there are... Um, Two lizard folk right on the very edge of the field. It looks like they're cutting down some crops. And um, and then off in the distance, you see much more torchlight coming up the road. I don't know about you, boys, but I think we need to take those two out before they warn their buddies that there is a potential trap waiting for them. Sounds good. Let's go. And then we'll go them into following us where we want. Everyone make an attack roll. Attack roll with what? With whatever you'd add to an attack roll? No, I mean, like, I think he means weapon-wise. Are we doing close combat, or... Like, you guys are uh, <coughs> pushing up on these guys and um, are gonna get a opportunity attack on them. Okay, so that's a 24 for Punchy. That's a 19 for Leon. Uh, 26. Uh, yeah. Every single one of you just... Ganks up <laughs> on these lizard folk and roll damage. For fucking curb stomping their ass. <laughs> so that's 24 damage on me. 13 damage. That's um, 10 for uh, old Leon. And as you come up on these lizard folk with a swirl of blows. They drop bloodied and bludgeoned and completely dead. Sucks this up. And a brief flash of light, because I use sacred flame. <laughs> and as. They're fighting there, half light. He was well much more than a kid. And as you take out these lizard folk, you see that this torchlight is approaching the pass and your first wall, and you see. Just up the hill. I mean, it's kind of a very light hill at this point, but there is a group. And at this point in time, you count 15 or 20. And they catch sight of you and um, are going to start battle. So I will say that if you guys want to try to get back with your defenses, before combat takes place, you can start moving that way. That's what we're that doing. what we are doing. And, yeah, uh, I think that makes the most sense. Everybody, roll initiative. Okay, Leon? Leon, got a 13. Jack? Uh, 8. Punch? 17. Uh, what's your initiative bonus, Jeff? Uh, negative 1. Okay. He's not a very dexterous man. Not so much. First up is a pack of these lizard folk who are going <coughs> to um, attempt to throw their spears at you guys um, as you're running back up the hill towards the pass. And um, that's going to be 
13 for Leon. Um, no, that is not going to hit A me. 6 for Jeff. No. Are you 6? You don't even know Dash. Bitch! 18 for Punchy. No! <laughs> Damn, Punchy's strong! The constitution, for the constitution for armor. <laughs> so they uh, they hurl off these javelins and they are ineffective. Next up is Punchy. I wonder what he's going to do. He's gonna punch something, maybe. He's gonna run. He's gonna run towards where they're supposed to be going. Fuck it. <gasps> so are you just running into the bottom of the pass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to do the world. Next up is the uh, next group of lizards who are going to come cresting over the left side of the first wall and are going to move towards the group. Next up is Leon. Leon's going to head for... You said they're cresting over here somewhere? On uh, the other side of the wall. Yep, right over no, there. Over they're just kind of coming up over the, the wall and going... He's chasing after him. He's yeah. He's going right after them. You, I mean, you're able to make an attack on this group. Yep, he's uh, he's gonna do that. Let's see. How is a twenty five, twenty four, and a twenty one? Those all will hit. Let's fucking go. Yeah, we're gonna deal thirty four bludgeoning damage. Yeah. So the combination of quarter staff and martial arts. How many say 44? 34. And um, next up is this other group of lizards who are cresting the hill and are going to attack Leon. 14? Nope. 8? Nope. Uh, 19? Yes. And 12. Now, what are they hitting him with? They are coming at him with a heavy club. And a bite attack, piercing and bludgeoning. Um, for 13 damage in total. Uh, next up is Leon's group of monks who are going to attack this group that just attacked Leon. Get them, boys! Show me what monks can really do. Quarter stack, D6. Uh, yeah, unless it's two handed, which is a D8. Next up is Jeff. Bring on the pain! Alright. Jeff is going to target a group of the lizards that is, um, like somewhat away from his allies and use Call Lightning. Okay. How big of a radius is that? Uh, it's five foot. Okay. Right. Yeah, anything within range of this. Everybody range. within five foot of the range needs to make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Twelve? Uh, no. Uh, so... So, anybody caught in the strike takes 21 points of damage. Noise! Lightning damage. Um, and then after that, Jeff is going to use his 25 feet of movement speed to move back towards the, uh, like, towards the valley, I guess. Like, trying to get back into their sort of fallback position. Okay. Um, next up is another group of lizards who have, um, made their way around the right side and are, um, kind of coming down into that first area between the walls. Um, so you guys kind of are starting to get boxed in a little bit. Jeff is starting back up. And they are not going to attack. Um, Wait, did they make it past the pits then? Yeah, they kind of went up. Okay. Next up is the gnome warrior that came with Jeff. And he's going to actually charge in at that group and make a couple attacks. He's unsuccessful. Next up is another group coming over the wall that way who is going to attack him. 
You were pretty. <laughs> Good job. As they uh, attack the gnome, he gets laid into a good little bit. No! Steven! No me! No! His name's Steven. Oh. Is he strange? Hey everybody, RJ here. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Realms and Nerds. If you are, and you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications for the show to know when new episodes are released. Also, maybe share the show with someone else that you think would enjoy it. It's one of, if not the best, ways to help our podcast continue to grow. It's available on pretty much every platform out there, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Amazon Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Thank you so much to our friend Kyle for composing the melody of our main theme. And of course, thank you to every single one of you for listening to our podcast. Next up is uh, the group that's on Punchy, and they're going to make some attacks. Yeah, they're on. 9, mm. 16, 9, mm. and um, they're unsuccessful on Punchy. You are up. All right, he's going he's gonna to do some punching. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. On I mean, I this thought, group I thought that, he was gonna spit at him. that just attacked him? Yep. That's a nat 20, boys. Ooh, let's go! Big city slam, boys. Top seven slams, boys. Six. So 11 plus 29 on the first one. Fucking go, boy. He literally falcon punched them. Falcon! Punch. How much? 29 on the first one. Falcon kick! He's going to use the old one, too. Um, I can make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So, 11, um, 11 plus 12 equals 23 more damage. Wait, what was the first one? What was the, the hit? 29? Yeah, I guess that hit. <laughs> Oh, wait, sorry, the second one. You rolled, Jesus, you rolled. Oh, that's a negative one. That's a negative, all right, that's a one. So the the second one didn't hit, but I get what was that? What was the other one, though? Uh, the damage on it? Yeah. It was 29. Another 29? What do you mean? No, oh, the you already rolled it. Your no, first he rolled damage. his 29 was the damage. That was the 29 damage. was the first damage. It was a crit. Er, it was a crit. Right. So, so you rolled damage, and then yeah. you were making your unarmed strikes. Yeah, so the unarmed strikes was 29 damage. But but you have to you roll against his AC. You have to roll to hit. I did roll to hit. I rolled an at twenty. Not on the unarmed strikes. Uh, oh, on the unarmed strikes, yes. I did a uh, I I rolled a crit fail, but I get extra attack, so I'm gonna roll again. But you get two unarmed strikes, right? Oh, isn't that, what, isn't that what you just said? Yeah, sorry, I fucked up. I'm I'm having way too <laughs> much fun. St. Patrick's Day. I'm having way too much fucking fun. The second <laughs> one is um. 26. That will hit. Alright, and that's a lemma damage. Now I get a bonus. Alright, now I get an extra attack. Get a fucking cool. For why? Because I'm. Oh, over. for your actual your yeah. extra attack. Because he said so. He's a that's god- 18. He's a goddamn boxer. 18 will hit. <laughs> got them lightning fists. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um. So 13. Uh, so that's 16 damage. And I'm gonna spend another moxie point to do uh, the old one two again. Can you do that twice on one turn? I and think your action so. And your... He's just blowing through his moxie points. 
So whenever you make a, a strike? Immediately after you make the attack action. So, so the first one is an 18. The second one is... 18 will hit. Uh, 16. 16 will hit. That's 11 damage and 13 damage. 24? Mm-hmm. Ooh, baby. You did a total of 80 damage. Nothing. He's a strong boy. So, um, He gets in the middle of him and just starts yeah, swinging. As, uh, as this pack of lizard folks surround Punchy, he just puts his fists up and actually, I think he just closes his eyes and just lets, uh, lets the fist do all the talking as he spins around, catching a bunch of these lizard folk under the jaw and in the chest. However, one of them gets a, uh, a strike. And um, he doesn't do very well. <laughs> he uh, he actually attempts he away attempts place. to get uh, get under your guard, but as Punchy comes around, he just catches him right in the jaw. It's like oh Ty- man, it's like Ty Long in the middle of the rhinoceros. Oh man, somebody's been like training in the gym pretty hard here. Get him, my boy. Show him the way of the fist. Oh, I'll show him. Next up is another group of lizards who are coming around that left side, and um, they're uh, they're right up on Leon and uh, and all of his monks, yeah, his students. Uh, so they're gonna make a couple attacks. They will try. Twenty one against Leon. They will succeed. Uh, Twenty two against Leon. They will succeed. <laughs> uh, Twenty against your students. And- <laughs> So, uh, two attacks. Seventeen damage in total. Alright. Yeah, I can take it. And, uh, seven on the students. Oh no, my kids! My boy! My boy's father, help! And, uh, Leon is a... <laughs> Alright, Leon's gonna... He's going to start attacking the nearest people. So he'll take his attack, his first attack, and his extra attack and wail the shit out of whoever's near him. Well, isn't that something? So that is a 27 on the first one. Um, yeah. The I think that might hit. 14 on the second one. That does not hit. I don't think a crit fail is going to hit either. Unfortunately, no. That... That just just misses. Just slightly. Just slightly. So roll damage for the one. Okay, that's eight bludgeoning damage, not as the five sour. And uh, opportunity strike nineteen. Yeah, uh, yeah. For seven points of piercing damage as this lizard folk uh, gets behind you and sinks his jaws into your shoulder. Oh that's a cheap shot. Dick move. At this point, you're all kind of surrounded in between those first two walls at this point as this uh, pack has come up on you. Cock a fucking noodle do. And uh, next up is these ones at the bottom who are going to attempt to throw their javelins and they're going to be throwing a death and a punchy and I think my, their I'm students. Saying, I think my name is Leon. At Leon, that is a 12 for Leon. Nope. A 7 for Punchy. Mm-mm. It's going to connect with the students. And, and with the gnome, man. Everyone that you brought with you is getting beat up. I know. <laughs> Run away! Run away! I think we're going to lose some, uh, some people here. I should have taught them. I should have taught him self defense instead of attack. Next up is this group of monks who um, are going to continue to fight this group that's in front of uh, them and Leon. And they're going to connect. Let's go. Um, and as this guy connects, he's going to use his whole fury of blows to make some unarmed strikes as well. 
for 15 damage. And uh, Jeff is up next, and uh, he's backed up a ways towards that second barricade as everything's kind of happening both on the rim and inside the passage. I am going to cast Guardian of Faith. Nice. Okay. A large spectral guardian appears hovering in the air. I'm going to say that this guardian looks exactly like Jeff Bridges. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> Just looks like Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want? Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. What else do you need? Uh, it's Jeff fucking Bridges. No, specific, specifically, it looks like the dude. <laughs> what else could you want, man? Come but, on. Yes, yeah, so this, this, this guardian looks exactly like the dude. He occupies a 30-foot space, and if anybody enters that space, any hostile creatures enter that space... They have to make a dexterity saving throw. It's like just your opinion, man. It's like just your opinion, man. Okay. Is that all you're doing? And that's my action. All right. Well, currently no one is... Uh, it takes up 30 feet of space. Yeah. I mean, I'm like right next... Yeah, that's I'm it. like right next to the... Um. So what do they have to do? A dexterity saving throw? Yeah. All right. So you're going to catch... Um, Group four and five who are um, inside and kind of on the far rim of the pit as you've moved back a little ways. I don't think that uh, they succeed. A two and five. <laughs> yeah, neither of their those are going to work. Five can't clerk. So uh, everybody that didn't save takes 20 radiant damage. Okay. A bunch of lizards just fall oh, over. Is it just enemies or anyone? Oh, uh, hostile creatures. Okay. There's no uh, save for that. You just take... And that's if they start their turn there? Uh, any hostile creature that moves to a space. So I guess if you're already in the space, yeah. you, you would encounter it as having moved to it. So I guess it's anybody that's in the space or has moved there. So it's either... I mean, however you want to handle it, it's either going to be right now or as soon as their turn starts, but either way. All right. Uh, well, next up is this next group of lizards who are going to make an attack running towards Jeff. They're, uh, so they're going to take the... They make a dex save. Does 19 save? Uh, yes. So they just take the so 10? They take, they take half damage. And it's just a straight 20? Uh, yeah, so they take 10 on a save. And then they're going to run towards Jeff and make some attacks. A 13. No. 14. No. Nat 20. No hit. And uh, 22. Yes. Ooshy dooshy. Oof. A doof. Um, Oof. Oh, that double thing. A doof. First. Oof. A doof. Oof. Oof. 24. Points. It Do you have a, a immunity to, to anything? Or resistance? It's slashing and piercing damage. I don't think you do, but. Not nah, good. I'm so good, though. Uh, Next up is, uh, is this gnome fighter who is going to make an attack. And, and uh, he's going to expend a superiority die to make another. Oh, look at him, and he hits. Big guy. Big guy rolling damage. Big man. Is... He rolls a 12. Jeez. And this last group, who is um, going to roll a nat 20 on their saves, they take 10 damage still. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, however, they are backing up out of uh, the range of this guardian. And we're back at the top of the order. And this first group, who's still on Punchy, are going to attack quite thinned out at this point. At 18. No. 21. Finally. And an 8 will not do it. No, hold on. 
That one was pretty close. For um, eight points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Barely anything. Ow, you poked me. a little me. prick. You scratched to me, you fucker. <laughs> you poked me. You shot my mouth shit. And Punchy, you are up. He gets angry that you just decided to hit him with a stick. I didn't, I didn't decide to do it. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't decide. That's 11 on the first one. <laughs> on the second one. Ooh, that's a 19. A 19 will hit. All right. So that's 14 points of damage, and I'm going to use a moxie point to 1, 2, buckle my shoe. Well, someone's got uh, zoomies. That's 21 on the first one. That will hit. And 15 on the second one. That will also hit. All right. So that's 17 plus uh, 10. 27. What was the first damage? I don't remember. I think the first damage is like 11 or something. They're like dead. That. <laughs> and that's it. And, um. Fucking one punch man over here. As Punchy again expends a, uh, a fury of blows spinning around, uppercutting these lizard folk, and uh, the last of this group that's uh, surrounding him dropped to the ground. Dead. Go. Oh. Skulls caved in. Oh, bitch. Get out the way. Who be next? Next up is Lizard Folk. And these Lizard Folk are the ones that are all up on Leon and the boys. Leon and the boys. <laughs> Betty and the Jets. Ah, uh, 20. Yeah. Mm. Oosh. And uh, they land a critical twenty on um, on the boys. <laughs> the boys are falling one by one. Help me! We Help me! Fight to the last man! Help me! Uh, Leon, ten. Okay. I might want to start considering healing soon. <laughs> Just give them some alcohol. Help them. <laughs> As this. Uh, this attack comes on Leon and his his training, his students. It comes up on Leon and his students. Uh, he sees his one of his students is looking really bad and uh, is nearly dead. No! Has two HP. You'll pay for that, there, you walleye muck sucking son of a bitch. And next up is Leon. He's going to kick the ass of the one that hit his boy, along with any others who might. Boy. My boy. Actually, he's going to do his attack, his extra attack, and spend a key point to do a flurry of blows. Oh, snap. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. serious. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. So, in descending order, we have a 28, a 27, a 21, and a 15. Every single one of those will hit. <laughs> oh, let's go! Death becometh you. That's 32 bludgeoning damage. This group of Blizzard had exactly 32 health. Did they really? Oh, he, he went to fucking town on them. <laughs> they heard his voice. And uh, put it into a fury by seeing his his students be brought to, down to their knees. Leon, with quarterstaff in hand, goes wild on this group. And as his last swing comes around and it rests on his shoulder, the last of the uh, lizard folk in this group falls to the ground. Next up is the group in the middle who um, is rushing up on Leon. Uh, However, in doing so, they are disengaging from the gnome who gets an opportunity strike on them. He connects, um, however, they are still going to make this attack on um, Leon. So. Crit fail. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. 18. Uh, yeah. 17. Yeah. 
Do I get Um. Yep. So let's we'll do the gnome's damage. Um, and then we'll roll the damage that they do to you for fifteen. Hmm. And then uh, your opportunity to get opportunity to beat the living shit out of them with a twenty-five. That will hit. Unfortunately, that was only six bludgeoning damage. Unfortunately, it was only. They caught him off guard when they hit him. Next up is the um, group of monks who are uh, turning their uh, gaze to this group of lizards who have run up. Ooh, who also need to uh, roll for damage because they're inside the Guardian of Faith. So one of those will hit. For 11 points of damage. And next up is going to be Jeff. And uh, they got to do that deck save. Um, and they fail, so they take 10 points of damage. Wait, they failed the deck save? Yeah. No. They fail, they take 20. Oh, they take 20, right. Sorry. Okay, how many people have been damaged at this point? Well, Punchy took some damage. Like eight points. Um, Neon is taking some damage. No, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm sorry. From Guardian of Fate. Um, let's see here. Eighty damage has been done. Okay, but actually has disappeared then. All right. So, how much damage did it do? Um. The Guardian vanishes when it's dealt a total of 60 damage. Hmm. Okay. So essentially just this last hit that I just put on this guy, these guys here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Jeff is up. Okay. I'm, like, gonna, uh, like, keep my Guardian by my side, you know what I mean, man? I don't want to cast Guardian of Faith again. <laughs> Um, so there are two groups, all right, three groups, that will get caught in that. And none of those are even close. So they're all going to take 20? Yeah. Okay. Those three groups, right? Yeah. Okay, so if, if each group is taking 20 damage, then, I, then the Guardian <coughs> disappears after that. Because it's 60 damage total, so if each group takes right. 20, then Guardian does damage and then disappear. I'm sorry, no, that would only be two groups. So there would be still 20 left. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. So two, gr- two groups full damage is 40 damage, so 20 on each group. And um, then uh, <laughs> it's going to be this group that has run up on Jeff again, so it's the start of their turn, so they roll... 17. 17 hits. Alright, so they're going to take that full damage, and they're going to make their attacks. 18. Yes. Uh, 22. Yes. And uh, 13. No. (laughs) For 20 points of damage. And as this group comes up on Jeff and is starting to uh, hit him with their clubs, he notices just on the horizon a new foe has entered the engagement. Oh no. There are three lizard folk riding atop raptors. Let's fucking go! What a great fucking story this will make. Are they riding upon fucking raptors? It looks to be that way, but first I should probably heal. I'm not looking too good. And uh, next up is this gnome (laughs) fighter who is looking to finish off this group that uh, he's engaged with. He's doing a pretty damn good job. He's doing a Pretty damn. And uh, as as he comes around with his great axe, he um, smacks the last few members of this party and they fall. 
Next up is actually this group of lizard folk that had disengaged. They're now at the top of the hill with these um, raptor riders, and they're re-engaging. Um, and they're going to throw their javelins, and uh, it's going to catch Jeff, the gnome, Leon, and one of the monks. Jeff, 21. Jeff. Leon, 22. Okay. I need to... Monks hit... Fighter does not hit. Leon is going to use deflect missiles to reduce the damage that is coming. Let's see how I do. So six points of damage is coming your way. Six points of damage is coming my way? Yep. I'm sorry, seven actually. Seven? Okay, hang on. So I got hold on one. Hold on. Uh, yeah. ha! Ha! So I reduced it by 16 points, which negates it, and because I did that, I can catch the missile and attempt to... I can spend a key point to make a ranged attack with it in the same reaction back at him. Alright, let's just finish this damage. Go uh, for it. Jeff is going to take 8, and the gnomes take 6. Or, sorry, the gnomes. Make that, uh, that roll. That's a 21. That will hit. Wow, well, what roll, die is it for damage? It is a d6. Okay. That's only going to be six blo- uh, piercing damage. That's all you do it, boys. Send it right flying back in. Next up are these raptor riders. Oh, goody. Who are going to charge down the hill. And the first one is going to make some attacks on Punchy. Seven does not hit. A 20 might. It does. And a 19. Roller once. Oof. Oof. That sucks. Womp womp. Womp womp. For 15 points of damage, the raptor smacks its neck into you and hits you to the side as he comes and hits you with his club almost at the same time. Fuck! Uh, next up is this next raptor rider who is coming down on this gnome warrior in the middle. And uh, he's going to land one of his attacks as this raptor makes a bite out at, um, at this gnome fighter. And the last raptor who's coming down right at Leon. 12, 23, 19, yeah. for 13 points of damage, and next up is Punchy. I'm going to do what I can do against you? this raptor I'm rider. I'm going to punch a raptor in the fucking face. Like Grunkle Stan punched that pterodactyl, I'm going to fucking punch this raptor. Ooh, and that's an dirty 20. That will hit. And that's 14 points of damage. I'm going to waste the moxie point. I so have seven of them. You said you were going after the raptor, right? Yeah. Okay. That's 13 on the first one. Ooh, 13 will not hit. Yeah, so it's just 14 points of damage. Okay. Oh, wait, I get an extra attack. What am I doing? And that's a 26. That will hit. And that is 11 points of damage. And next up is Leon. All right, Leon is going to use his action to uh, clasp his hands over his face, take a few deep breaths, and heal himself for 65 points. Um, using that extra HP you granted him from earlier. He is almost back to full health. Gotta love wholeness of body. And that's about all he can do, it looks like, this turn. That is his action. Alright, next up is the monks, who are engaged with these riders. They're kind of circling around. <coughs> like Balder. 
one of them's gonna hit. And they do a nice little chunk as some of their kicks and uh, punches land on the Raptor Riders. And Jeff. Jeff. Good old Jeff. Good old Jeff. Jeff Rap. Good boy. Good night, Jeff. All right. I like things. <laughs> Jeff's going to move up. And he's going to cast Mass Cure Wounds, um, specifically targeting himself, uh, Punchy, and the students. The boys. The monk. The boys. Yes. Twenty-one points of healing for everybody. For everybody? No, nice. people he mentioned earlier. For everybody I targeted. So, you punch in the monks. Yeah. As uh, Jeff runs down the hills a little ways and shouts out, he and Punchy are uh, get a little extra resolve, and uh, the monk that had fallen down uh, gets <gasps> back on his feet. And next up is a group of these lizards that are in the, the center fighting. Um, and these are the ones that were... Um, on Jeff, so he's like right in front of them, so he's gonna make some attacks. 18. Ah, uh, yes. A critical fail. <laughs> and 23. Yes. For 9 points of damage, and uh, you get an opportunity strike here. Okay. Um, the one I get an opportunity on, I'm just gonna, like, I guess it. If it's sort of a reactionary attack, I'm just going to hit him with my Warhammer. Do it. Give him a little wet. Smack him. Uh, 21. That will hit. Bloody boy. You stupid as hell. <laughs> uh, hit him for 9 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, next up is the Gnome Fighter. Dum da dee doo. Dum da who is going to connect on his attacks on this group in the in the goalie. Damn! Put down damage! As he sets his feet and comes swinging around with his axe, his first swipe connects under the jaw of uh, one of these lizard folk, and the second one comes across the chest, and then smashes another one who is getting up off the ground, into the ground, and this group lies dead. Damn. Damn, Daniel. Damn, son. Uh, next up is this uh, group that was charging with the, the raptors, and they are making an attack on the gnome, the students, and Punchy. The gnomes gonna... <laughs> The students, no. Punchy, 12, does not hit. No, sir. Oh, laughable. Ha, ha, ha. Sound like the fucking count. Ha, ha, ha. One miss. Ha, ha, ha. Two miss. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you actually got it. <laughs> oh, no. Next up is the, the raptors running around. One of the raptors is going after Jeff. 16? Uh, no. Natural 20? Yes. And 11? No. Okay, so they get that double damage in. For 16 damage. As this raptor just comes running in and kind of catches Jeff with a claw and his teeth as they fly by. Next up, another raptor who is attacking at this gnome fighter. And again, the uh, the raptor coming around is able to uh, find a claw attack. And the last raptor is going after Leon. Uh, 21? 13? Nope. Uh, 19? You got, like, so lucky. Six. <laughs> Bitch! Uh, as 
Somehow you only take six damage as both the rider connects uh, with his club and you get a claw across the chest from this raptor as it rears up a little bit. Grazing blows. And Punchy is up. Punchy's gonna fucking uppercut the one that attacked him. Yeah. Uh, it's a 16. Uh, against the raptor? Yep. That will not hit. That's an 18. That will hit. Uh, that's 13 points of damage. Alright. The raptor just fucking dead. You're like a little Mac. Little Mac! <laughs> and as this raptor continues its circling, Punchy, uh, sets up and, uh, looks like he's gonna come with a nice big right hook, and as it comes around, sneaks in a left. And, uh, Leon is up. Leon's gonna attack the one that attacked him. Alright. And he's gonna spend a key point to do four attacks. A poopy point. Did he take Raptor 2 or Raptor 3? Is that the second Raptor attack? I think it was the third one. Okay, that's what it's on. Well, thank God for luck. You're lucky? Yeah, halflings are lucky. Hello, lucky. So, the lowest one was an 11. That will not hit. Then there's a 15. Which also will not hit. An 18. Hit. And a 24. Also hit. Okay, so two of them. 33. Wait, no. Sorry, I apologize. 23. 23. Yes. And, uh, again, as this raptor is circling uh, around this group, it gets a little too close, and Leon's able to catch it with a, a, a kick and a, a poke from his quarterstaff. You take it right in the face, you fucker. And his group of monks is up next. One of their hits is successful. And uh, this monk is going to choose to go all out through your blows. For 13 points of damage. And Jeff, your spells are needed on the battlefield. <laughs> yes. Okay, Jeff is going to use Mass Healing Word. So I can heal up to six creatures. So I guess I'm going to get myself, um, Punchy, Leon. Your gnome fighter is not my, looking too good. Yeah, say my, no, uh, my gnome fighter. And then I'll do two of uh, Leon's students. Okay. For ten points. These monks are looking better than when they entered the fight. <laughs> That's pretty sad. They they, they uh, don't even look like they've been sweating. Yeah. Because we monks don't sweat. Same with, uh, well, same with Punchy. We try not to anyway. Unless you study under Guy Sensei, in which case yeah, right. you need to use your sweat. Mm-hmm. The red sweat. Oh, jeez. And, uh, I guess that's it. Sick, dude. Next up is your gnome fighter, who is going to take some swinging swings at these raptors. Actually, um, I think he's going to attack on the, the lizards <coughs> coming down the hill as they come down into the goalie. I swear, I've gotten more 11s and 12s off of this D12 than any other day. It always seems to go that way when you're DMing. And he, uh, he takes out one of these lizard folk in this group and, uh, heavily damages another one. And, uh, that group is up and they're gonna make some retaliation strikes on this gnome and, uh, the monks who are down the goalie. Wow, they get. As they come down the hill, they uh, are an advantageous place to make some attacks on these monks and on the fighter, and their hits connect. And uh, next up is a raptor rider who is going to attack Punchy for 10, Mm-mm. 16, Mm-mm. and 15. Mm-mm. Next raptor rider is also going to come at Punchy. 21. Yeah. 18. Mm-mm. 19. Roller ones. With a DM that's determined to hurt Sad. you. 
I'm not determined. They saw they saw the failure and they decided to come and help. <coughs> they saw Little Mac beat the shit out of him. Punchy, a strong boy. Um, mm-hmm. and that's gonna be eight damage. <laughs> and the last one is uh, coming at the monk. Isn't Lance Riddick Savala? Yes. Oh. And they do real bad, and they don't connect with any of the monks. And Punchy is up. Well, Punchy's gonna do what he does best. And punch. And fucking punch somebody. Punch the raptor that was attacking him? Yep, for, uh, that, the first one's 21. That will hit. Second one is 27. That will hit. First one's 10. Second one is 13. I wonder where they got raptors from, man. Yeah, it's dandy. It could be anywhere. Listen, they can talk to the raptors. They're like, hey, raptors, you want to help us? The raptors are like, boy, do I. <laughs> Spinosaurus appears over the horizon. Three! I don't know if we can quite handle that one. And that one is mine. <laughs> as Punchy connects with this raptor rider, he actually is able to hit the rider off. And uh, as he falls to the ground, he lays a couple punches into him, and his face is bloodied, and, and uh, this rider is dead. But the, the raptor is still running around. Leon? No, oh, Leon's going to keep beating the shit out of the one that he's been fighting. He won't spend a key point this time, so it'll just be three attacks. One's a nat 20. That will hit. One's a 19. Hit. And one's an 11. No. Okay, so. The double damage. 24 points of bludgeoning damage. Ooh, baby. As he swings, Leon connects his quarterstaff into the side of this raptor and then continues with a punch up at the rider. And uh, they're not looking super good. Sure. Next up are his monks who are um, engaged in this battle with the lizards that had run down the hill. Two of theirs will hit, and they got a nat 20 on one of those. Uh oh. <clears throat> As they connect for 21 points of damage, and Jeff is up. It would be. Okay, so, um, give me the exact layout of what we're looking at right now. What you're looking at right now is everybody's in this area. You're kind of here. There's the raptors kind of circling. There's this group over here, and then everyone else is kind of fighting in the middle down there. Okay, so for the, I'm going to target the main group, and uh, I'm going to once again use Guardian of Fate. All right. Which once again takes the form of <coughs> the dude Jeff Bridges, with a long beard, sitting cross-legged and meditating. What's the What's the save? Uh, dexterity. Maybe. No, I'm saying it's what's. What do I have to beat? It's a dexterity saving throw. Right, you have to beat. You have to beat a uh, sixteen. All right. So the first uh, raptor rider got a thirteen. Next one, the 15, and a 17. So one of those Raptor Riders will succeed, and the group of lizard folk will also fail. So, same thing, it's uh, 60 damage? Yes. Alright, so here's what we'll say. The lizard folk are going to take 20, and then another 20 here, on Raptor Rider. This is actually going to kill him, so it's not going to take the full damage. So, um, there's still nine damage in the pool. Okay. And, uh, as this guardian appears, one of the raptor riders, actually the, uh, the raptor that was, had lost its rider, is going to fall over and is dead. Next up is this gnome fighter, who is still engaged with this, these lizard folk. My boy! Critically failed, and then got a 24. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We got him. As this gnome fighter swings his axe around once again, he takes down another blizzard folk and comes down on this last of the group and uh, he's able to deflect the axe and he's going to make an attack against the fighter and fail. And uh, next up is My boy! the first raptor rider who is making a beeline toward Jeff. 16? Uh, yeah. Critical fail. <laughs> 11. Seems to be a lot of No! Okay. Jeff just flexes and the attack bounces off of him. Um, for 4 points of damage, sorry, 5 mm-hmm. points of damage, and you get an opportunity attack. Okay, so I'm gonna hit you with my Warhammer. Um, uh, dirty 20. That will hit. Okay, so. I hit you for 12 points of bludgeoning damage, and then um, an additional 8 points of poisoning damage. Where's the poison come from? I have a th- thing. Don't bother, actually, because um, as this raptor rider comes charging at Jack and attempts to make a fury of blows on him, one of them connects, but as it does... Jeff comes back with his war hammer and hitting both of the rider and almost as his hammer connects with the rider, his guardian comes down and smacks the raptor and both the rider and the raptor fall dead. And next up is raptor 3 who's going to come back at good old Leon. Bring it on, you motherfucker. Wait, 6 no. does not hit. 21. Unfortunately. 22. Unfortunate. But I can fucking do it. 23. For <laughs> 10 damage. Bitch, you'll take more than that to kill me. Now I'm coming back at you. Punchy is up. He sees the uh, one remaining lizard folk and one raptor rider on the field. He's gonna immediately go after that raptor rider. First attack is a 27. That will hit. Second attack is a 20. Unnatural. That will hit. 16 plus 17 damage, so 33 damage. As Punchy comes running down the hill, he jumps and in midair makes about two punches on the raptor rider, bringing him to the ground. And then, with a punch to the kneecap of the <coughs> raptor, it drops, and then he again, with a big strike, hits this raptor, and its neck, you can almost hear it snap. That's giving it the old one, too. And, Neon, you are up. There is one lizard folk left. Oh, you know he's gonna kick this fucking lizard folks' ass. He's gonna he's gonna spend a key point. He's not gonna waste any uh, opportunity here. I mean, we gotta like uh, we gotta finish this off here, man. How's a thirteen? No. Okay. It's uh, seventeen. Yep. Twenty-seven. Yep. And a nat twenty. Yes. One of them was bound to do something. Just uh, just so we know how much damage you do. I, I'm just curious. No. No. Okay, hold. 38 bludgeoning damage. This guy is 35 points dead. (laughs) As Leon comes running over with a front flip, he gets a a flying kick in and uh, drops this guy to the ground. And then (coughs) coming back around with his quarter staff, comes down right on his neck and crushes his vertebrae. And that's how it's done, boys. I hope you all took notes. Because I expect you all to be able to do it the same way in the future. Oh man, he's so cool. Sensei Leon! And they all as, bow. as soon as the fight is over, Punchy fucking passes out from intoxication <laughs> and just lays on the ground. You better... And then suddenly over the horizon appears a marmor. <laughs> 
Hey, that was, uh, that was pretty cool, man. I know. And you were pretty cool out there, too. With all the lightning and the healing. I'd compliment Punchy, but it seems he's knocked himself out. Yeah, he's just taking a nap, man. I mean, you know, pretty, uh, stressful situation, you know. Sometimes you gotta, gotta, uh, you know, take it easy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I suppose. You see him pull up his fists as he's sleeping and just start hitting the air. Shadow boxing in his yeah. sleep? Sleep fighting Ron Swanson. As the party finishes this fight, night has fallen, and as they are in, uh, as they are rejoicing their success and uh, cracking open and drinking a little more of the ale, both Leon and Jeff notice just a uh, Maybe a mile, two miles away on the coastline, they see a shimmer of light going up towards the sky. I wonder what that thing is. You don't suppose the story the old man was telling us about has anything to do with that reverse shooting star? I mean, uh, it's definitely something, man. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's light coming up. Man, I don't know what to make of it. Not only, but it's kind of cool. Boys, I'd say we had a victorious night, and that light's a sign of our time to celebrate. I mean, uh, should we, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we go, uh, should we go check it out, man? No, I don't think it's all that important. I hope, anyway. I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. With this, our three fighters, uh, I should say, uh, our eight <laughs> fighters, all find their way to a seat next to a campfire as they drink and tell tales of the fight that just happened as uh, the early mornings of St. Sonne Day creep up upon them. <laughs>